beginning in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy chapter 16, actually, sorry, I'm, chapter 15, I'm sorry. I'm just going to read this to you guys real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 15, it says this. Hold on one second, I'll be there in a second. Here we go. It says in verse 1, At the end of seven, every seven years, you shall grant a release. And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor shall release what he has lent to his neighbor. He shall not exact it of his neighbor, his brother, because the Lord's release has been proclaimed. Did you hear that? So what happens every seven years in the system that God created in Deuteronomy in the law? He said, when there is debt that's happening, as Paul said, because debt is messy and debt creates slavery, as God proclaimed freedom to the captives, we are required, in part, to be able to proclaim freedom to those who we have lent money to that have borrowed from us. So, what this tells us, all right, is that God himself creates a means by which debt forgiveness has to take place within his people. God also explains in the New Testament, because you could argue, well, in the Old Testament, that's one thing, but we're in the New Testament now. In the New Testament, uh, there's a story that Jesus tells. It's actually found in uh, Matthew chapter 18. I think it starts in verse 21. It's a story. Uh, Peter comes to Jesus and asks about forgiveness and how forgiveness works. And then Jesus tells this amazing story about a guy who owed money to his master. And, and he comes to his master, he's brought in, and he can't repay the debt. So the master says, I'm going to put you in prison, I'm going to put your family in prison, they're going to be enslaved to me. So what does the guy do in the story? You guys remember the story? He falls down on his knees and he begs for the master to show him mercy. And he says this to him, please give me opportunity to pay back the debt. I promise you I'll work on it. And what does the, the Bible say? Jesus says the master took compassion on him mm -hmm. and did what? Forgave, forgave his debt. I mean, forgave it. It was done. Now, Jesus did not say, though his debt was forgiven, as all of you know, I require that you pay it back anyways, right? That's not in the story. Jesus says he left with his debt forgiven, taken care of. And then, of course, you know the story, right? He doesn't forget some, uh, forgive someone that owes him debt, so the master finds out, pulls him back in, puts him in prison, and the whole thing starts over. What is the context of that story? Is it debt forgiveness? No. The context of the story is forgiveness as a whole, right? It's saying, Jesus is saying, when you've been forgiven much, then you ought to forgive much. And if you're not going to forgive much, that's a real problem. But the reason I bring this story up is because Jesus, the creator and sustainer of the universe, God in the flesh, creates a story where he makes an assumption in the story, does he not? He assumes that debt forgiveness is an option. Did you see that? He didn't explain that this is just for the story, but we should not really experience forgiveness this way. He made the assumption that it was perfectly acceptable that a master would forgive somebody who owed them, and that that meant what? That the debt was repaid. Do you see that? So debt forgiveness becomes an option because what debt forgiveness does is it takes care of the debt and it makes it repaid. It's the same way Jesus takes care of our debt that we hold before God. Did you realize that because of our sin nature, we have done many things and we hold debt toward God. We are, we are going to be held accountable. Jesus comes, forgives our debt that we hold to God so that what? So that we are free to have right relationship with God. And this is an assumption biblically that when you owe somebody something, the option of forgiveness is on the table. So, 